Everybody, please give him a warm welcome. Hello. Check. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. How are we feeling? Yeah. Happy, sad? No? I can see Greg doing a thumbs up there. Uh, are you excited? Are you looking forward to your weekend in New York? They just want to get out of here, Dylan. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is uh, Rishi. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate in, in the School of Computer Science at University College Dublin. Uh, I'm here to talk about my project, uh, which is titled Annotated Lip Reading for Augmented Educational Systems. And I'm funded by the Science Foundation Ireland's Center for Research Training in Digitally Enhanced Systems. Uh, that does sound like a mouthful, but we call ourselves DREAL, which sounds really cool. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about, I'm essentially going to introduce my project to you. Some of you might be aware of these details already. But my project is, it starts with the hypothesis that immersive tech will influence pedagogical perspectives and practices in the coming years. Uh, virtual tools have increasingly become more attractive for real world learning, training and development. Uh, the interactive classroom experience that uh, XR devices provide uh, make uh, these environments attractive, not only for school education, but also, also for uh, students from different phases of their lives, for example, from universities, uh, people working in vocational trades, uh, manufacturing, supply chain, and so on. It is also being used as a global platform for art education, where uh, famous artists uh, or arts from famous artists is being embedded in uh, immersive environments. Uh, uh, I think we are all, uh, since we have gathered here at XR Access Symposium, we'll, we're all aware that there is uh, an inclusivity issue with XR environments. Uh, moreover, lip reading uh, being mainly used by deaf and hard of hearing people uh, which is being used for several decades now and being taught in uh, schools as well, uh, was sort of attractive to some researchers and they decided to uh, go and uh, perform automated lip reading. But that also remains a huge challenge. Uh, the aim of this project is advancement of accessible, uh, access accessibility of external environments and uh, help people. Uh, to put things into perspective, uh, the motivation behind this project lies in the idea that immersive technologies will have a significant impact over the educational industry in coming years. Uh, according to market research company FactMR, uh, AR in education sector is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 80% uh, between the years 2021 to 2031. Uh, this industry was worth $1.5 billion uh, in year 2020 and it is expected to grow uh, to more than $85 billion. Oh, oh, that's my clicker. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it is expected to grow at, uh, uh, expected to grow from $1.5 billion in 2020 to more than $85 billion in uh, 2031. Uh, 2031. And it's expected to show massive growth in uh, North America, Europe, and uh, East Asia with 40% share in North America, which is huge. So from market research data, it is clear that uh, AR education industry has huge plans. And if these plans, particularly at child education level, succeed, we might have entire generations uh, that are shaped by this technology. Thus, it is crucial to ex uh, explore various avenues to make XR uh, environments accessible for people from all segments of the society. Uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about lip reading now. So humans, being the constant evolving beings that they are, have been uh, practicing the skill of lip reading possibly, possibly for thousands of years. Uh, it's been taught in, in schools mainly uh, in the past few decades. Uh, it is most exp extensively used by deaf and hard of hearing people. Uh, so I'm, I just have a quick question here. How many of you are aware of uh, McGurk effect? So very few. Uh, that's great because McGurk, Harry McGurk was a researcher from the UK who came up with this idea 
well, it, it's a phenomenon in vision and speech perception. So what McGurk did was he ran two experiments. One of them was an audio-only experiment where his subjects would hear sounds of different syllables. And it was really easy for them to identify what syllables were being pronounced uh, because it's just sound. Uh, and 99% of them accurately predicted or identified what was being said. However, the second experiment was an, audi was an audiovisual uh, experiment with mismatched videos and audios uh, where a syllable that was being pronounced, there, there was a video of a syllable that was being pronounced and it was dubbed over by pronunciation of a different syllable. And the average error rate in this case was 92%, so only 8% of his subjects accurately identified what was being said in that video. Uh, this uh, shows that all humans are reading lips to a certain extent and perceiving speech uh, with the help of vision as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, lack of accommodations in XR systems for disabled segments of the society is a major challenge. Uh, it's increasing influence in education and in turn development of our societies has instigated the urgency to explore this avenue to provide better education prospects for DHH people. Uh, but there are certain challenges with automated lip reading. The first one is uh, there is no wisdom, uh, there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between wisdoms and phenoms. Uh, there is an uneven distribution between uh, these two uh, uh, components and uh, what es essentially it means is same lip movements may exhibit different pronunciations. One of the examples that I can give you is the words oat versus goat. Uh, these two are completely different objects. They have their own identical uh, identities, their own characteristics. Uh, but if you just look at a video of me saying oat and goat, uh, there is a very high probability that you wouldn't be able to tell what I'm, being, what, what I'm pronouncing there. Moreover, until recently, gathering data in this, this field was a very difficult task. Uh, what researchers really had to do was recruit a number of subjects for their project, uh, create appropriate light conditions, get cameras, uh, give them text to read, uh, get them teleprompters. If they make mistakes, you would have to uh, do retakes. So it was a very time consuming and expensive uh, process. Uh, and majority of these databases, mainly before the year 2015, uh, uh, were created in Western countries, so they didn't necessarily take any cultural or social differences in account, um, such as ethnicities or accents or pronunciations or language proficiencies, which was also a big problem. Uh, as I took my first steps in, in this project, I formed a systematic literature review uh, in automated lip reading and its applications in XR. But what really ended up happening here uh, is that since automated lip reading in itself is such a new uh, field, and XR also being such a, a, a nascent field, uh, it really turned out to be a systematic literature review in automated lip reading, uh, because I could find only one primary, one primary study which was worth including in this work. Uh, so at the beginning, I came up with uh, my main literature question, which was, what is the state of the art, future scopes, and challenges in automated lip reading? There are a number of sub-questions sub also. Uh, some of these sub-questions were what techniques and algorithms are used, which algorithms are most promising, what are the different types of data sets that are being used, and how can XR systems be more, ma made more accessible? Uh, in, in this process, I reviewed 155 primary studies focused mainly focused on automated lip reading. I identified a number of research gaps, one of them being automated lip reading is not at all implemented in XR. Uh, and I also have made a journal publication which is under review uh, and have submitted to, uh, submitted to uh, International Journal of Computer Vision. Uh, there were a number of inclusion and exclusion criteria in this. So for inclusion, I took studies that were published between 2002 and January 2023. These were all peer-reviewed studies, 
studies that were published from any countries were sele selected as long as they were written in English. Uh, studies that described algorithms and techniques of automated lip reading and accessible XR were also included. For literature exclusion, I excluded studies or publications that didn't mention lip reading. I also excluded studies that refer to automated lip reading but don't describe it. And also the studies that are not oriented towards improving automated lip reading. Uh, I came across some interesting insights uh, during this work. I'm just gonna take this off. So modern deep, deep learning algorithms exhibit near perfect accuracies for easier content, such as digits or alphabets. So at the beginning of, uh, at the very beginning of uh, the research in automated lip reading, people tried identifying simpler pronunciations such as syllables or alphabets or dig digits. And we've come to finally come to a stage where we're almost uh, accurately uh, predicting these pronunciations. Uh, we've also come up with new database uh, creation techniques. Uh, there were some research, uh, researchers from University of Oxford who came up with the idea of using uh, BBC broadcasts, a collection of BBC broadcast videos as uh, databases for their work. Um, this was also facilitated facilitated by recent advancements in uh, big data technology and availability of streaming platforms. And uh, since then, a lot of researchers have taken up this idea and uh, uh, databases in different languages are being produced now. Uh, there are uh, databases in uh, Chinese Mandarin, uh, which were uh, created using uh, Chinese TV broadcasts. There is a German database that was created from German broadcasts and so on. Uh, and some of these algorithms are actually performing better than humans. Uh, humans uh, are said to pr uh, predict about 30 to 40 percent of uh, lip reading accurately. Uh, there is an algorithm called LipNet, which is uh, performing better than humans at 52.3%. And there's another algorithm called A.V. Hubert, which was developed by uh, uh, Meta, uh, which claims to perform at higher than 75%. So it's clear that some of these algorithms are performing better than humans on the databases that they're being exposed to, although there's still a long way to go when it comes to sentence level uh, automated lip reading. Uh, I'll talk a bit more about the advancements. Uh, so. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we went from alphabets and digits to sentences in the wild. Uh, so initially, researchers focus, focused on recognition of simple utterances, such as digits and databases. Uh, when they perfected that, they were like, all right, we can maybe go and try and predict simpler day-to-day -day phrases like thank you or excuse me. Uh, and now we're in a situation where we're trying to uh, work on recognition of full sentences in controlled and uncontrolled environments. Uh, a modern lip, uh, automated lip reading system has three uh, steps, three important steps. The first one is lip localization. So uh, in, in this phase, what we essentially do is we crop uh, the lip region from a person's, uh, from, a, from an image frame uh, the second one is feature extraction, where we extract uh, features from their lips. And the last one is classification. Uh, this uh, research was particularly transformed in the past decade with the rise of deep learning. Uh, there is an emphasis on use of variations of CNN, uh, recurrent neural networks, and other complex machine learning algorithms. Uh, they're utilizing machine learning evaluation metrics. And it has definitely contributed uh, um, to LR improving. In fact, in my paper, which I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you all know uh, when it, it gets published, in my paper, there is this graph which shows that until the year 2015, there is not a lot of interest in this field. But suddenly, after 2015, in the past seven or eight years, the graph just goes up. Uh, and a lot of people are participating in this research and trying to improve it. And that's mainly facilitated by deep learning. Um, now, I came up 
I came across about 13 different research gaps. I decided to focus on nine of them, and I've categorized them in three categories. So the first one is uh, lack of ALR in XR applications. Uh, integration with XR is not uh, contemplated in automated lip reading, which is a big issue for us. Uh, there's also a lack of ethically aligned design systems to accommodate uh, automated lip reading in XR environments. Uh, moreover, there is lack of evidence of effectiveness in real-world and controlled settings with these algorithms. So these algorithms perform phenomenally well or have been performing way better than humans do on, on the databases that they're be being exposed to. But there's no real uh, information on how they perform in uncontrolled settings. So for example, if I try to uh, read Shiri's lips, for example, using uh, uh, an automated lip reading algorithm in, in in this environment right now. I'm not sure if it's going to perform at the same level. There is also a lack of standardi standardizations. Uh, there is no standardi standardized methodology for the technology assessment of ALR systems in XR. There is no te technology acceptance model. Uh, there is no methodology for assessment of access accessibility level of an XR application for users with ALR needs. And the list goes on. Um, so with this, I formulated three research questions. The first research question is, how can XR systems be designed and developed to facilitate accessibility through automated lip reading functionality? What is the evaluation strategy for ALR supported XR systems in order to implement an inclusive and ethically aligned design? How can standardized assessment and accessibility level of LR system through XR technology be created? So these were the three research questions I came up with. And then I created this complicated diagram of, of a system architecture. Uh, I would suggest that you don't focus on this complicated part on the right, which is the Mirage XR framework. The, the part that I'm mainly working on is on the left here. So Mirage XR is actually an open source augmented reality based educational framework created by researchers uh, funded by uh, European Commission and who come from different European universities. Uh, they use features such as ghost tracks, in C2 feedbacks and anchored instructions and they also provide real time visualization and feedback. Now, uh, since Mirage XR is already uh, an educational framework, I thought it was um, a it would fit into my project perfectly. Uh, the, the diagram does look complex, but it, Mirage XR is a pretty standard framework with an app layer, a cloud layer, and a data, data layer. The app layer interacts with users, so you're gonna get user input from the uh, app layer. The cloud layer will, will store my business logic, which will be you know, lip localization, feature extraction, and classification. And then eventually, I would expect this system to provide me with uh, a text output. Moving on, I decided to experiment a bit with some of the state of the art uh, algorithms that I mentioned earlier. Uh, one of them is called AV Huber. It's a self supervised. Uh, re uh, so Self-supervised representation learning framework developed by uh, researchers from uh, Meta. It uses uh, convolutional neural networks uh, for feature extraction and transformers for classification. It also uses a lip reading sentences three dataset, which was also developed by University of Oxford, and uses thousands of spoken sentences from TED and TEDx videos. Now the results with uh, A.V. Huber were amazing. Uh, it achieved state-of-the-art results in lip reading uh, and even in audiovisual audio speech recognition as well. The word error rate that it achieved was the best was 26.9% and it, it consistently achieved uh, less than 35% in uh, word error rate. However, I decided to experiment with this uh, algorithm using a Google Pixel 3a mobile phone and I used random sentences with varying sound conditions and surrounding conditions. Uh, and the word error rates for this were really high. They were consistently between 80 to 85%. Uh, 
So it's clear that uh, surroundings, brightness, colors, uh, maybe my way of pronunciation, pronouncing words uh, is affecting the performance, performance of this uh, algorithm and reducing its accuracy. The next experiment I ran was on a algorithm titled LipNet. Now, LipNet is one of the first end-to-end -end sentence level lip-reading lip models. Uh, it kind of revolutionized this field. Uh, it uses spatiotemporal uh, convolutional neural networks for feature extraction and bidirectional GRUs as classification. Uh, it is trained on a database titled Grid, and it, it achieves 95% accuracy on it. So I decided to do a demo of it. It, <laughs> it, it performed phenomenally well on Grid by achieving around 95% accuracy, but the result obtained on videos taken in real-life surroundings were even poorer than in AV Huber. So I decided to look a bit more into it. And it turns out that Grid is actually just a collection of random English words. So each sentence has six words, uh, and these six words come from a, a curated uh, vocabulary. So they have like four colors, 10 digits, 25 alphabets, because they're not using W. Uh, so uh, really, it's just uh, 50, 60 ra uh, regular words that are being repeated over and over again. And it's not providing me much accuracy if I expose it to uh, uh, real life settings. So I've decided to improvise this. I'm going to train LipNet on LRS3 now and see how it goes. I haven't done it yet. I haven't been able to do it. But uh, I'll let you know maybe less next year. Uh, from both these experiments, uh, I learned that these algorithms uh, perform really well on, on uh, control settings that their databases provide. But they do not necessarily uh, do the same uh, with varying surroundings, and it opens the door to improve ALR technology in this regard. So I'm going to show you uh, one of the examples uh, uh, from my demos. Uh, so could you ple please play this clip? Uh, no, the one on the left. What's that? You know, that sounds kind of cool. And then, like, I'll form like a melody around it, um, and that's that's a lot of fun. Like, I really. Now, this clip is taken from Voxelab database that uh, uh, Av Hubert also uses. Um, it has a word error rate. On the left, there you can see uh, different evaluation metrics. So the first one is word error rate. The second uh, one, numcor, it represent represents the number of correct identifications of words. Uh, the rest of them are basically errors. Uh, num sub is substitutions, num ins is insertions, and num del is deletions, so uh, uh, words that were just not identified. And num count is the number of uh, words in the original sentence. Uh, now the word error rate I got on this was point 345, so that's 34.5 percent. That's amazing. And this is an embarrassing video of me. What's that? You know? Sorry. Oh yeah. So this is an embarrassing video of me uh, uh, reading a text from a disclaimer that I found on a website. Access the data. You need to create an account. Your account will only be enabled if you supply a valid university email address and properly identify yourself. So as you can see, I'm sitting in my living room, just one uh, depressing light on. It, it's kind of like a halo behind me, very bad conditions. I'm like really like my face is right there in the, in the camera. And the prediction I got in this was extremely poor. Uh, my word error rate is 82.1%. Uh, which is far from the 34.5 that I achieved in my uh, previous experiment. Uh, the, the words that I've marked here in red are the words that were being 
inaccurately predicted. And if you read the sentence there, it's a lot of, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it will be able to influence a plant on valley, or it will see the eliminate chess. I, I don't know what that means. Uh, so this really showed me uh, that uh, <laughs> there is still a long way to go in this. Uh, there are a number of future steps that I'm going to take after this uh, to improve these systems. So the, uh, the first step is to develop a prototype, uh, evaluate it, and then standardize it. There are a number of design parameters that I, I have come up with. I uh, performed an XR accessibility analysis using resources such as XR Access Initiative uh, um, and a number of other, uh, like W3C uh, and a number of other uh, sources as well. Um, and I've come up with a few design parameters here. Uh, so the first parameter is obviously audio or video capture. Or your video capture. Uh, second one is lip reading algorithms. Uh, then comes real time processing. Uh, I, I would like to display some captions in my system as well. Uh, this system should allow customization. So, as uh, Christian mentioned yesterday, there should be some customization available in, in changing sizes of captions, their positioning, and so on. Uh, uh, we, want, we also want to provide user interaction in this. Uh, uh, there, is, there will be a testing phase, and uh, a number of accessibility gu guidelines will also be provided. Uh, the evaluation criteria for this include accuracy, time and space complexity, uh, robustness, ethics, and usability and accessibility. Uh, I don't really have much to add on standardization because I don't have a system to standardize yet. Uh, but once I get to this point, I would like to uh, create a standardized framework, which I believe will be the biggest uh, contribution of my project uh, in uh, Im implementing automated lip reading in XR systems. Uh, so that was me, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you have any questions, please fe feel free to uh, ask them. Yes. Well, I talked for 30 minutes, almost. This is Christian speaking, and I, yeah, I am fascinated by your presentation. Um, I see some possibilities to apply automatic lip reading, automated lip reading um, for videos as well. Um, you know, when they don't have any sound and you can just take in the information that the person is speaking just by lip reading. Um, and for the purposes of example, surveillance, surveillance as well, um, I think that could be very useful, understanding the possibilities of using that in XR too. So I was wondering, I know, I know about interacting with a person through XR, that's an obvious application for this, but for the purposes of avatars, lip reading avatars, um, and the accuracy for that, but I'm actually thinking about the opposite. Do you mind talking about, like, what is your intuition about applying automatic li automated lip reading in cases like I mentioned? Uh, uh, in cases like surveillance, you mean? Uh, surveillance. Oh, uh, what are my views about app applying it in surveillance? Uh, I, I do not want to do it. <laughs> uh, I understand that completely. Um, not necessarily. That was just an example of a situation. Right. But like where you could pl apply um, automated, automated um, lip reading in other situations other than just interacting with, in XR specifically, other than just interacting with an avatar, well, right. what else could you apply it to? Uh, so another application of automated lip reading could be uh, improving speech recognition. So speech recognition in quiet environments uh, works really well, but in noisy environments it's not yet accurate. Um, so one of the imp uh, one of the areas that we can explore in this is doing audiovisual speech recognition, where um, uh, you use visual cues 
uh, in addition to audio uh, to improve the accuracy of these algorithms in, um, in uh, noisy conditions. Um, so that would be one of the applications that I could look into. Thank you. Thank Hi. you. Thanks. Um, yeah, this is a super interesting research area. Um, I had like two quick, more technical questions. Like, first one is for using this in XR. Are you more envisioning like AR interaction where I, both of us have AR glasses on or VR glasses that mm -hmm. have cameras that can then give us that uh, camera data of your lips moving or are you envisioning some other kind of stream? So yes, I will be using uh, cameras on head-mounted devices. Uh, so for now, I'm using a HoloLens too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, essentially, I, the camera of HoloLens, well, this is what I envision, the camera of HoloLens will uh, see your face and uh, try and lip read as you speak. Gotcha. Uh, uh -huh. Does that answer your question? It does, it does. Um, I guess then a follow-up question is, uh, I feel like for XR, one of the cool advantages is that there's like a lot of streams of data available. So you could get like what you're seeing of, on the lips of the other person, like what the HoloLens is seeing. But even for like the Vision Pro, for example, like they have like, I think cameras on the bottom that might be able to view your lips underneath the glasses. So like your own lips. Your own lips, yeah. Right, and maybe I'm thinking other ones like if someone is speaking, you could maybe also incorporate like speech to text mm -hmm. as a, another uh, thing to add in. Yeah, like, yeah. And then lastly, it was something that I was thinking about from the last part that you were talking about, how the words have association is that they're, I, I'm not like super familiar, but I know mm -hmm. there's like transformer model, like attention stuff where there's word associations that are important. I'm wondering if that's also something that you've considered where like, um, I guess for ChatGPT and like these kinds of things, they yeah. uh, associate like different words such that like the grammar or mm -hmm. meaning makes sense. And I'm wondering if that would help in the case. Right, where the, so uh, what you're suggesting here is integration of large learning models in uh, with, along with my uh, computer vision uh, algorithms right. so that I can get more sensible uh, sentences. Exactly. That that is uh, one of the um, uh, one of the areas that we could explore in future, but at the moment it's more important to properly identify what words are being spoken, um, and that's what I believe. But yes, it, it is like at one point um, if we indeed achieve the word error rates that we are achieving here in uh, Av Hubert uh, with the example of the clip that I showed you. Uh, in that case, uh, that would really be beneficial uh, because it will more be it will be more like an assistive feature uh, to an already highly accurate algorithm, as opposed to an algorithm which um, performs poorly uh, f from the beginning itself, and you're trying to make a sense of it. And you know, even after that, you just get. Uh, random sentences which do not necessarily exhibit what the person next to you is communicating with you. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, hello. Let's see. Oh, hi. Uh, thank you, thank hello. you. Yeah. So, like, I also did some silent speech research before, and I sort of want to ask them something about the input device in terms of VR. Mm -hmm. In your case, looks like you're using audio video inputs for the lip speaking. Mm -hmm. While most of the VR headsets today, they also have the deep sensors as well, and probably acoustic sensors. And previously, I did research about using these data to convert the lip reading signals to pictures and then put them into the deep learning networks, probably similar to your case. Mm -hmm. So my question is, have you thought about different input devices on these head-mounted devices, like VR headsets, because they already have different sensors in addition to cameras? So right. did you thought about like exploring more uh, possibilities for these inputs? Uh, so uh, using different sensor data uh, to uh, to improve uh, like lip detection. Yeah, yeah. 
Actually, uh, there are papers in these kind of ubiquitous computing mm -hmm. that prove sort of the feasibility. So uh, of of detecting lip movements. Yeah. Uh, oh, I haven't explored that actually. <laughs> it's uh, it's something that I should look into. Uh, thanks for your feedback, though. I, I will look into it. All right. Thank you. So I have a question related to the data sets. Mm -hmm. So with Hubert, for example, which is trying to be trained on a wider range of data. Yeah. Um, were the, did you find, if you drill into it, like biases between people who are speaking with pronunciation in mind versus those who are speaking casually um, affecting its uh, error rate? Uh, there, is, there isn't necessarily any effect of this. Uh, well, some people mumble, and that definitely has an effect on, uh, on the on the errors that you get. Um, so, but, but the problem with this is you can't really tell if they're speaking casually or, uh, is that your question? Uh, yeah, are you I'm looking at their data sets where you know, you've got public speakers who are sometimes mm. in the data set and yeah. they are speaking very clearly yeah. in that vein. Yeah. You've got people who are having a conversation with each other mm -hmm. or they're performing in some way. So you have different, um, buckets, you could say, of right. the way they're approaching speech and yes. the way the camera might interpret it. A third one might be people who are perhaps not trying to speak out loud, but kind of lip mm -hmm. speaking in that vein, which they oftentimes humans will over accentuate yeah. their movements. Uh, it, that definitely affects uh, the error rates then. Uh, if you're like, if you're putting uh, more, uh, if people are putting more emphasis on their pronunciations and especially uh, uh, if you come from a Western background where you have an American accent. Uh, there, like, there definitely are differences between how the lips move when you're from uh, one country. Like, it, there are cultural differences, and that does affect that does affect the error rates that we achieve. Uh, and along with cultural differences, there are personal differences as well. Um, some people just mumble. Some people have a a more animated way of speaking, um, so uh, and that has a, has definitely has an effect on the uh, accuracies that we achieve. Uh, but the problem is, we want this algorithm to uh, to work well, regardless how, of how you pronounce your words, um, and that's what we're striving for at the moment. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, a really intriguing presentation. I really enjoyed it. Um, I want to get your thoughts on how might your training model fare on virtual avatars that are stitched together from really robust systems like the Vision Pro uh, featured on their FaceTime um, f uh, system that is stitches together a virtual avatar that simulates lip movement from all of its uh, you know, many cameras. Mm -hmm. I want to know, do you think your training model might fare well uh, training on like a front-facing uh, virtual avatar? Uh, because I think there are some great advantages to um, tracking a virtual avatar because you know it's always gonna be front-facing, yeah. it's not always gonna be well-lit because mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's virtual. Yeah. So I want I wanted to know: Have you ever thought about doing something like that? Uh, yeah, I have thought about doing something like that. And uh, yes, you are right. If you are in one position, uh, uh, as opposed to uh, training your algorithm uh, on videos from different angles, if you just have one position, if you're just looking at it from uh, at looking at a person from a front view. Uh, uh, in theory, that should uh, improve the accuracy of uh, my algorithm. Uh, but again, um, a lot of these, for example, the LRS3 database uh, uses uh, videos which uh, videos which have uh, faces from different angles, um, and that's what we're exploring at the moment. Uh, a lot of experimentation in this field uh, in its initial stages were was mainly focused on uh, front view, but uh, that's that's something that um, the communities, uh, well, they have focused a lot on it, and they want to focus more on um, different 
angles, if that makes sense. And that's why I'm looking at it from uh, multiple view, uh, um, what can you say, multiple view uh, perspective, I suppose. Okay, great, thank you.